So, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Michael Fogus. I, I, I'm not sure exactly why I was invited here, although I, I, I might have some, some ideas. I mean, I once read a book on racket uh, that might have something to do with it. Uh, it was a very good book, by the way, but uh, I've, writ I've written a book, uh, two books actually, and, and I have my own blog. Uh, all of these things are important in, in, in the modern day. Uh, you know, if you're not online, you don't really exist. Uh, you know, I have a little newsletter that I've written, and I've contributed to Closure Script and Closure, and uh, I even wrote a language once that was inspired by by Racket, uh, and <laughs> and uh, all of these things have a common denominator, I think, and, and and it really answers why I was probably invited here, and uh, I think I can I can safely say that I am some kind of funk leader. <laughs> and, and as a funk leader, uh, I think it's my duty to uh, say something very inspiring that uh, is confusing at the same time, and uh, you might not realize what the meaning until later. So the story that I have to say, then the inspirational story I have to say, uh, like all good stories, starts with a goose. And so uh, there was a macro, there was a master macrologist named Pai Mu. Uh, and he had a he had a he had a zendo where he he would teach students the the art of macrology. And one day a student came to him and he he, he presented him with a problem. And he said, uh, "Pai Mu, uh, there is a goose." Uh, and 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 one day uh, a macrolite put put the put the goose in a bottle, a Klein bottle indeed. And he loved the way the, the goose was always warm, and, and it was it was able to be fed uh, through the bottom and turned over. The goose would fall over, and uh, the food would come down on top of its head, but it was still able to be fed. But the goose would grow and grow and grow, and uh, it was becoming quite uncomfortable in there. And the student said, uh, "How does one extract a goose from a Klein bottle?" And so Pai Mu looked at him and immediately changed the subject to the weather. And, uh, they talked about. Uh, how nice it is to walk around in the woods, and and eventually the the, the student forgot uh, that he'd even asked the question. And so, uh, as the student left, uh, he was about to leave, and Pai Mu said, "Oh, just a moment." And the student turned around. And he said, "There, it's out." <laughs> so, keeping that in mind. <laughs> You know, we live in a we live in a time where there are just I'd say hundreds and hundreds of blog posts and uh, informational sources coming to terms with a very simple concept: this. And if you if you if you're not sure what I mean by that, there's there's a uh, an idea in, in JavaScript that there's this objects have this self -ref, this referential. Uh, uh, reference this reference that, that refers to an object, and so uh, in JavaScript it's very difficult to to understand uh, at any given moment what what the value of this is, and and so uh, it, it, it's disheartening to me to know that there are languages like Racket uh, that 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 don't have these kinds of problems, and indeed are are quite heavenly in the way that they uh, they are constructed and 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 they're used and. Uh, and, and, and it's quite a shame to me that, that we're, we're in this situation. But one time I was in Bologna and I, I went uh, to uh, a little church and, and it was a church that, that, that Dante had visited and, and, and so they had a lot of murals and um, you know heaven and, and hell and, and so this is this is the this is while this is not one of the murals that was there this is very representative of the kind of mural and, and, and I say you know this is this is racket and and you know there's a lot of there's a lot of nice things to look at and, but then i looked at the the images of hell and i and i think i understood why we're we're sort of in this situation and and the reason is i think because honestly hell looks like a lot more fun i mean there's there's a lot more going on here i'd have to say <clears throat> so uh, i'm sure there's a lot more to it than that but i i think that this is maybe maybe uh, Maybe we can start from this as the premise. Now, at one point, I, I had I had this great idea about writing a book, and I was going to pick a pick a programming language and sort of dive into it, the programming language's influences. 
And, and the language that I had picked was, was Ruby for whatever reason. I, I don't even know why, but I think it has a rich history of, of languages that, that, that directly influence it. Uh, but when I presented this idea to one of my friends and colleagues, Russ Olson, uh, he immediately, his response was immediately, oh, don't do that. No one cares about this. Now, I wondered why he would say something like that, and it, 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 it led me to, to really examine why what I thought would be an extremely interesting book uh, would be uh, outright dismissed, dismissed like that. And I think part of it has to do with uh, something like this smells of PLT. Now, <laughs> PLT now, nowadays is, is, is a dirty word for, for people who may actually be doing something that represents or something that resembles what PLT might be. And for those who, you know, maybe take it as a joke. And it seems to have taken on quite, quite the, uh, and it seems to have inspired a lot of joke. <laughs> uh, you know, we, there's just an endless stream of PLT this and PLT that, just making jokes about. And this, honestly, my favorite one is probably, so I, I do find it quite funny. Uh, and, and, but, you know, <laughs> more than that, I think that, you know, there, there's this, there's this view in, in our, in the industry and, and, and I, I want to say, and I want to make that, that word, uh, I say, I use that word very specifically in, 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 in the industry that, that programming languages are sort of very isolated, uh, things, you know, they, they sort of all stand on their own and there's this, uh, you know, these guys over here and these guys over here and there's this constant tension and someone must win. And, and, and in reality, I don't, I don't think that that's true at all. I think that there's, there's a, there's a connectedness between all of the languages and, 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 and if you look at it from a really, uh, pie in the sky kind of way, all languages are the same. Now, I, I certainly don't mean that in the sort of fake Turing equivalence argument. I mean that in that languages, uh, for better or for worse, uh, influence each other, and uh, there's sort of this patterning uh, in 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 language development that uh, languages without the influences of, of of any other language would be the landscape would be very different. I mean, what would what would closure be like? I mean, would there even be a closure if there wasn't a Java, if there wasn't a C plus plus? It certainly would. I would imagine it would be very different. So keeping that in mind, I think that you know there's there's this tension uh, in in industry and uh, in uh, the world that Racket lives in uh, that uh, I, I'd like to address. But I, to do that, I'd like to start with what I think is Racket one of Racket's greatest strengths, and that's education. I think that uh, I I personally cannot think of a better language for uh, the purposes of educating uh, young computer scientists, uh, and, and never mind computer scientists, but, but anyone who might be interested in, in learning this, uh, the programming skill. Now, uh, you know, this is, this is only, this only touches on a few things, but if you look at the world of Racket and you explore its richness, there is just, there's so much, it, there's too much, honestly, to, to, to get through, uh, in the amount of time that, that, that many people have to explore these kinds of things, especially in industry. But there's so much there, and I think that we sort of have to get, uh, use Racket in an educational context to foster all of these ideas. But we, in, in academia, and, and certainly I'm looking at this from an outsider's perspective, so please take what I say with a grain of salt. Uh, we, we kind of are in a situation where, uh, we have, uh, you know, paper after paper after interminably dull paper, sort of, that is a proof begets proof begets proof begets paper begets paper. And it's sort of like academia by mitosis. And so, uh, from an outsider's perspective looking in on that, it's very... It, it can be very intimidating, I would say, uh, especially uh, given that the, the, the current uh, environment in, in academic publishing is such that it fosters that kind of uh, 
the, the production of that kind of paper. And so uh, one thing I'd like to say is that we have to be very careful about uh, putting, assigning a value judgment to, uh, based on the, the, the current trend in, in uh, what it takes to get an academic paper published. I think from an outsider's perspective, it seems, that seems to be happening. Uh, but the good news is that every rack of paper, or most rack of papers I've read, and I've, and I've read my share, uh, it tends to be very playful. Rack of papers, indeed. Uh, as I, I, I've yet to read a dull rack of paper, and, and I think that that's, that's important. Uh, because uh, the, sort of the, 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 the notion of playfulness, I think, is, a, is, is actually very important. In, in programming, and and uh, when I was in when I was in school, I was I was a TA, and some of my favorite students were those who came in and, and sort of had a playful attitude towards learning, uh, towards programming, and and I think that that really shines through in 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 Racket. Now there is there is a downside to that I think because uh, in uh, the pre college education. Especially in the United States, the, the the technical bent is is actually quite weak, I would say, and students come in not knowing very little, uh, and especially knowing very little about how to learn, and so it's a very challenge. I would say it's a very challenging uh, uh, environment for uh, professors to to have students who come in uh, and and don't really have a context for programming, and certainly not a context for learning in general. But if you can find the student who's playful, I think that that's a good thing. But very often, uh, the students come in and uh, they don't really know how to, um, you know, they, they don't they, they don't know how to learn. And so, very often they they were they were in undergrad. I'm sorry, they were in they were in high school and they took they worked on the computer alone and they. Uh, they, they hacked away uh, on the weekends, and, and, and they have a very poor understanding of what it takes to be prepared to um, write programs and, and to think. And so uh, when they get to college, I think that it's important, uh, at least uh, in the United States, I've found that it's, it's important to somewhat um, like, like salted meat, to spoil them in, 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 in a way, to make them tolerable to live with. And what I mean by that, is that the student, <laughs> the, 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 the student left to their own devices is, is, is uh, could be a dangerous thing, I'd say, <laughs> dangerous to themselves. And so, um, <coughs> but I think, it's, I think it's important to know that we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't uh, make the student feel like they're on probation. You know, it, it's, it's important to teach them certain principles so they can take that along with them. Uh, and I think it requires a language that's slightly different. And, and I think that uh, Racket is indeed um, that language. Uh, not only because um, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting language, but I think that it's important to expose um, the student to something that's, that's different and provides different ways of solving problems and thinking. Uh, different paradigms, uh, because we we're you know as I mentioned uh, we're in we're in a we're kind of in, in a pickle uh, where uh, we our programming languages and, and the people who are practicing them tend to see their problems uh, through a very narrow scope. Um, and I uh, when when I was a kid I I, I was a skateboarder and and so. Uh, we would build ramps, and, and very often, uh, all we had was a hammer. And so how do you build a ramp out of a hammer? It's, it's actually quite challenging, but it can be done. So you, you, you take the claw, and you, you, you score the wood uh, deeply, and you sort of put it on the edge of the curb, and you smash it. You smash the wood until it's somewhat straight, and then, and then, uh, you, then you nail it all together. And you've, you've built this ramp out of a hammer. And so that, to me, is sort of... Modern programming, I would say, you know, the approach, the approach to, uh, to programming, and and you can say, uh, 
you know, there, there's a, one of my favorite sayings is that, uh, you know, when you have C++, uh, every problem starts to look like your thumb. <laughs> but I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a hater. So, um, but I think, I think that there's, this sort of leads back to, uh, you know, a, a problem uh, in, in our very way of looking, uh, looking at the world. And, and, and human intelligence is such that uh, most of the time we see things in a very focused view. We're, we're focusing on one thing. I mean, uh, you know, even the way that we see is, is in, in a very focused way. We can move from one place to another, but I think that that, uh, that doesn't really solve a problem. So if we have, we have a certain way of thinking about things, uh, we, tend to, we tend to drill down, and, 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 and our, our brains are forced, somewhat fighting it with us to, uh, to do that. But there's a, there's a different kind of intelligence, I think, that uh, one uh, where I would, I would call it setting the pot to boil. And that's the kind of intelligence where you take some, some ideas that you've come up with and you sort of put them in the back of your brain. And you go off and you do your things and, and, and one day you wake up and I've got it. But the problem is that that uh, way of doing things is somewhat like, uh, like holography where you can take uh, a tiny portion of an image and reconstruct uh, the image uh, from a, a fragment of that of that piece, and so uh, the smaller piece you can you can you can take the tiniest fragment and reconstruct the image. Of, of course, where you have that the, where the, the tiny piece that you started with is very clear, but then on the edges it gets much more much more blurry, and so uh, it's it's important to start with a larger piece to if you want to properly reconstruct the image that 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 you started with. Now, that's where Racket comes in, I believe, or language like Racket especially, uh, is that uh, in order to set the pot to boil, to uh, make a good cup of tea, for example, you have to start with good water, you have to start with good, good tea leaves, uh, or else you, you know, you're running into some big problems. And, and Bodo, I, I don't want you to miss the pony. Please notice the pony. <laughs> I, was, I was told yesterday that uh, I must have ponies. And this one spits, so I had, to, I had to add my own bent to it. So yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if you're setting the pot to boil, you have to have good ingredients if you want to make a good soup. And uh, langu uh, a language like Racket can do that. So what are, the th what are some of the things that we can, we can learn, we can teach uh, that Racket fosters that would allow us to uh, make thinkers who are able to solve those hard problems uh, in a way uh, that is not constrained to thinking in a very narrow view. And I think one of the ways is, is a Racket's approach to languages. And there's a couple quotes I'd like to share, uh, both from the, the foreword of my book, uh, Joy of Closure, uh, it was written by uh, Dr. Friedman and, and Dr. Bird. And uh, the first is by Alan Perlis, and he says, there will always be things that we wish to say in our programs that in all known languages can only be said poorly. I think that's, you know, it's, it's, it's perilous. I mean, this is what he did. This, he was able to succinctly state things that on the surface seem so obvious, but we have real trouble falling into these problems. But a, another way of putting a similar notion was, uh, uh, was mentioned by, by the, the two authors of the foreword. And, and it says, creating little languages to solve a specific problem is the most effective technique yet devised for reducing complexity in software. Now, I, I, I suspect that that's a debatable statement, but I think that the, 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 the nature of it is spot on. I think that um, some of the, if, if you're writing a programming language to solve a problem, uh, the very best language to use to solve that problem is the, is the, is the one that directly uh, expresses the solution in a way that, that is coherent within the, uh, the domain that, that the problem lies. And, and in Racket, I, I, I think we have uh, a great capability for doing this, multiple capabilities for doing this, but the one that really stands out for me is the, is the, uh, the pound-lang capability. So this is, this is Spider Dog. 
Uh, I suggest you look. I suggest you look this up immediately after. I mean, do it now if you want. I won't. I won't hold it against you. It's an amazing YouTube video. But any case, uh, almost as amazing as as Spider Dog is the way that you can take this Lang Pound Lang capability and uh, turn. Uh, turn the, the racket language on its, on its head. I mean, I, I don't know how to better explain it, but it's the kind of thing that if you look into deeply, it'll, it'll blow your mind and it'll stay blown because this is some amazing capability. And, and even more so than, than, than this, it, it sort of fosters a new way of thinking about languages, I would say, at programming in general. And, and uh, I've read a paper, uh, many papers by... Uh, Ian, Ian Puyamarda, and he talks about something called mood-specific languages, and that's where you take the idea of uh, you have contextual blocks, and you uh, you express within that within that block exactly the the right language to solve that particular problem. And I think this is a very powerful idea that in industry uh, we're certainly not uh, using with any proficiency, and and I think that perhaps there is a room for it. Uh, another way of that we can use uh, Racket to foster good thinking is uh, building up systems based on uh, core solid principles. And so, uh, you know, Racket itself is designed in this way. And I think uh, if you look at the work that's been done with submodules and uh, you know the the language, excuse me, the language itself. Inform the way that 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 should be that that should be created, and uh, there's a book that 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 I've only read partially. It's a very big book, and it's called Living Systems. And although it's not about uh, programming or computer systems, I think it has a lot to say about this approach. And uh, just like uh, in the development of the submodules, uh, it's the the. the Racket had something to say about the way that that should be done, and, and the Racket implementers listened very closely. And I think it was, I would say that it was a success, as far as I can understand uh, the way that it was solved. So uh, this is another way, I think, that um, that I know that, that we, uh, my company, myself, uh, Rich is, in, is in, the, in the audience, and this is certainly something that, that we've taken to heart uh, in that, uh, the language that we're using uh, should inform the way that we're building our systems. And, and, and this is something that uh, I see as a real problem in, in, in industry, especially where uh, things tend to try to be shoved into a certain uh, way of doing things rather than having the system, the problem, and the very core concepts inform the rest of the development. So I have a... I have a uh, I'd like to present an idea, you know, how this all fits together. And, and so if we, if we have a problem, often we start with, you know, not a really good understanding of what's going on. You know, we have no idea uh, what we're looking at. You know, we're looking at the letter O, but that's really I'm just using that to represent uh, object-oriented programming. So this is, this is object-oriented programming. We're trying to solve a problem. We have no idea what it is. Now, object-oriented programming is going to, it's going to inform our thinking in the way that we go about solving this problem. And it may give us a way of, it may give us a partial view of the way that we can, we can, we can, we can get at the solution. But even still, it's, it's not quite, we don't quite know what's going on. And, uh, we need more. Now maybe we can take logic programming and, and add that to our arsenal. And then now we, we may have a better idea of exactly what, uh, how we can solve our problems. <clears throat> but even still, unless you have a context for what this picture is, uh, you, you might not still know what, what you're looking at. So, again, we need, to, we need to really branch out and think about things in other, from other perspectives. And so, even still, we may actually get at a, a more crystalline, clear view of the picture. But there's more to learn. There's more to use. There's more that we need to put at our disposal for uh, building systems and solving problems. And I think that, that at its very core, Racket is an embodiment of that sort of 
ideal. So in, you know, in case you're wondering, this is this is this is what we're trying to look at. But uh, we, you know, we may never get at this this clarity uh, when trying to solve a problem. But uh, when building up and educating people, uh, we need to be able to uh, give them the a way of removing the occlusion from their views as soon as possible. And, and I think that racket is that kind of language. But the problem is, I think, that um, you know, racket is not widely adopted in education as, as I would like it to be, and I'm sure as everyone in here would like it to be. In fact, there's a, there's, uh, there was a trend at least a few years ago to sort of focus on a more uh, industry-specific, uh, something that a student can take with them as soon as they graduate. And, and hit the ground running. But I, th I think that a language like Java is, is insufficient for that because, as I mentioned before, a student is like that salted meat. They come in and they, uh, they're, they're spoiled a bit in education just so they, they don't rot. And, and, and eventually, they must be rehydrated. They must be, uh, they must be made to, to, be, to be thinkers. And, and I'm not sure that focusing on a language like Java at an early stage like that is, is, going, to do, is, is going to do it. So I would love to see, uh, though I think that Racket's true strength is in education, I would love to see it uh, really take off. Now, uh, that's up to many people in this room to solve that problem. Uh, I, I, I don't have the answers to that. But I do have something to say about industry, I think. Um, so really, you know, what we would love to see, you know, there, there are always surveys. You know, what's the language, uh, what's the most popular language? Uh, and, and, you know, never mind uh, the specious way at which they uh, uh, come to these conclusions. But it would be great one day if it looked like this, right? And this, this would be awesome. I mean, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm a closure. I, I, I write closure. I've spent a lot of time with closure. And even this would be awesome for me. Uh, but, you know, we, we live in the real world. And, and, I, and, and when I say real world, I often do this because, um, you know, my subjective real world is very different from someone else's. And, and uh, when, I was, when I was writing my, the, the first edition of Joy of Closure, there were, there were many complaints. You gotta put real world examples in there. You gotta put real world examples in there. And so I, I elicited feedback. Well, what would be uh, a real world example. Well, web stuff. You got to have web stuff and like how to do forms. And I was like, okay. Well, <laughs> when I go to work, I don't do any of that stuff. <laughs> I'm writing distributed simulations and, you know, this, I, 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 I've never needed a form and I've never needed to process customer data. So I, I, I wanted to, you know, it kind of reminds me of a story about um, Picasso and he was living in France uh, during World War II. And when France was liberated, uh, he was visited by a young GI. And the GI came up to him and said, you know, I just don't get your paintings. They don't look like the real world. And so Picasso said, oh, that's interesting. And he changed the subject and he said, oh, do you, do you have a girlfriend? And he said, of course I do. And so he said, do you have a picture? And he said, yes, of course I do. So he took a picture out of his wallet. Picasso looked at it and she said, oh, is she so small as all this? <laughs> and so, uh, you know, when, when I say real world, the quotes are implicit. Please, please understand that. So, you know, in, in, in the real world, you know, things look more like this, right? I mean, this is, this is closer to reality. I mean, there's closures over here. It's got a little tiny sliver and there's, there's like a pixel, pixel wide blue strip for, for racket. I think that, I think that that's fairly, uh, Fairly representative, although maybe not entirely accurate. Although I, I would present, I would, I would suggest that it may be just as accurate as the surveys out there. Um, so, but if you'll notice, you know, closure sort of found this adoption that, while seems very small, uh, I'm, I'm of the opinion that it's, it's sort of hit, uh, it's, it's achieved a level where I may be able to spend an entire career. Uh, working with closure and, and, and uh, using closure. And so, but that wasn't the case, uh, what, six or seven years ago when, when I first learned of closure. And 
uh, racket was it was it racket six or seven years ago was, was it still PLT scheme I okay so it was, it was PLT scheme there were three options that I came to and there was PLT scheme and there was uh, racket and now this new thing called closure uh, at the time I think was called Lisp number six thousand four hundred thirty three <laughs> and and so uh, when coming to a decision of why uh, I would have chosen closure over something like PLT scheme or uh, or, or uh, Qi at, the, at at that time, and it's now called Shen, uh, I think that there are a few things that I used in my thought process that uh, that may be emblematic of the way that other people are using. And the three that really stand out is is that it it immediately came with a rich set of persistent immutable data structures. I think that that was really kind of uh, at the time it was it was a new way of doing things and that was interesting of course but uh, the, the the benefit that that provided was fairly obvious as from from my perspective as a Java programmer having to struggle with a lot of problems that Java programmers were struggling with at the time but the, because I was a Java programmer I mean the Java interop was obviously a big win for me and when I first discovered Clojure, I was working in a SCIF, and a SCIF, for lack of a better definition, is a, is a is an environment that is very closed down, and and it's very restrictive in what you can do, uh, the kinds of computing resources you can bring, network connections out, and uh, certainly for me, getting uh, the doctor doctor P doctor scheme into that kind of environment was just was just a no go. Uh, installing a common Lisp to run Qi was was just was just not going to happen. But when we enumerated the list of dependencies for the system we were building, closure.jar was was an easy inclusion. And so getting that into uh, the kind of environment that I was able to to work in was was easy and 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 at the time because of this these other benefits, you know, performance polymorphism, I'm not sure that there is an answer for that yet in, in Racket. Um, although uh, I'm not up to speed with the current research, but I would say that, that uh, Clojure's story for that is very strong, uh, and, and, and it, it achieves that by delegating down to its host, uh, host environment. But that's not to say that, that Racket can't make inroads here. I think that in the recent years, we've, we've really we're in a, in a renaissance of programming languages, uh, not only in academia, but also in, uh, I won't speak for academia, but I will say so in, in industry. And, and I think that uh, this environment that we, we find ourselves in is a real opportunity um, for uh, Racket to make some inroads. You know, there's, there's no reason uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a system that's uh, built up of services on the back end server there's no reason that Racket can't serve as one of those those services on the back end. I mean, Paul Graham talked about that a long time ago, but I don't think that that you know if we if we think back about how this polyglot this language renaissance came about, uh, and especially in the way that it um, allowed a language like Clojure to gain uh, a modest amount of success, I would say, is that um, you know there was a there was a reemergence, and 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 I. I don't know, I can't say for sure if Racket has benefited from this, but it certainly wasn't in the, uh, this reemergence didn't come about because of, say, Common Lisp or Paul Graham's writings, although I, I, he, I suspect he may have had some, a little bit to do with it. But really, I think that there's two reasons why this came about, and, and one of them is Ruby and one of them is Python. And those two languages, and I'd like to say thank you for those, uh, those two languages really, I think, opened up uh, people's minds to the possibilities. Now, these languages were informed somewhat by Lisp, but uh, they had their own problems. And, and obviously, uh, if you're a Ruby programmer or a Python programmer and you, uh, you see the power of some of these ideas, uh, it's, it's only natural to want more. And so uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to say that, that, that it's a good thing that this happened because this has allowed a language like Clojure to gain some traction and it will allow a language like Racket to do so uh, the same. Because like I said, you know, it's not enough to know 
one or two paradigms. You know, we need we need to know more because uh, that allows us when solving any kind of problem to triangulate. And if we don't, and if we can't do that, then uh, you know, I, I, I question the, the the value of the systems that we're creating. But the problem is, we have we have a we have a we're working in an environment that uh, people are working off of unexamined suppositions. You know, they 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 really uh, need to think about the languages that they're using, the tools that they're doing, uh, the preconceived notions that they bring to any problem informed by these languages. And I think that Racket, more so than a language, can serve. As, as a lens for viewing computation. So uh, it's very nice. I mean, I, I love Racket. It's a beautiful language. But the ideas in Racket, I think, are more important than Racket itself. And I would say the same about Clojure. Uh, you know, the way that Racket approaches solving problems, including the problems in the language itself, is very informative. And I, and, and, and I hope, and I think that there's an opportunity that we can can use to inform industry. Because if without that kind of lens, how do you know? How do you know when something's good? If you, if you can't triangulate uh, based off of multiple points of view, uh, then I'm not sure that, that you can come to uh, uh, good solutions. So what, how, how do we get Racket to, how does Racket achieve this? How do we get Racket into the minds, and, and, and better yet, under the fingers of people who are, use, who are building systems in the industry. So what Racket needs is reach, right? We need to be able to get it. And there's a few ways that you can do it. And one way, obviously, is to uh, sort of ride on the coattails of a language that already has reach. And Clojure, uh, Clojure Script has done that. And, and, it's, uh, and, I, and I believe that, that there's, there's, a, there's an effort in Racket called Whale Song. Is that right? Whale Song that... Uh, is, is targeting this kind of uh, reach. And so targeting a language that people already uh, have accessibility to, even the people that may be in those black holes of the skiff, uh, is something that I think can be very powerful. Um, but that's not the only way. I mean, this is definitely, I would say, maybe the most powerful way. But there are other ways that Racket can sort of uh, infiltrate industry. And, and one way that I absolutely know is, is the case is that it's, it's, it's influencing uh, languages and libraries that are already being used in industry. And so I created a library called Core Contracts that, although uh, doesn't follow the exact dictums of uh, Racket's contracts capability, and in fact, it, it, it absolutely cannot uh, follow the exact di dictums of Racket's because uh, Racket, uh, I think they would... You guys would like me to think that it's it's just all macros, right? It's, it's it's there, but there are hooks in the language that that you're taking advantage of. Then and Matthias Matthias got put me onto this, and but it explains a lot and why I couldn't I couldn't get at the same level of, uh, of of capability. But if you look at it, you may actually see the influence there. So you know we have a couple functions that are that are uh, defined. Uh, later on, we apply some contracts. One is to the deposit uh, for the argument A. Uh, you know that that function should take a number and return something. You know, uh, and and likewise for the balance function uh, of no arguments, uh, we don't really care what it takes, but it should return a number. And so you know this this will this will construct a function that uh, will uh, give some level of safety. I'd say not as much as I would say that you would get, achieve in in Racket. But it was highly informed by this, and this has been used in some projects that are now being deployed to uh, the real world. Uh, but more important, and I think we, uh, a lot more, uh, uh, well, the, something a lot more important than that, I think, and, and, and more deeply used uh, and has uh, gathered the attention of people uh, in industry is core typed. And Ambrose talked about this at Strange Loop. And it's a it's a wonderful system, and it is it is absolutely informed by uh, typed scheme and typed racket. And uh, Ambrose would be the first to fall all over himself to uh, explain that to anyone. But I, I so I won't go into this a lot because he already talked about it. But you know you, you're annotating a function uh, with some types, and and uh, you're checking them after the fact. So 
while it's it's certainly not exactly like type scheme, I think that that's that's typed racket. Excuse me. It's certainly the that's that's his model for uh, building up this thing that I think a lot of people are really interested in, in, in getting their hands on. So that's that's a couple of ways. You know, we can I, I would say I would say influence, although some people may say theft, but racket certainly is has influenced people uh, in in the way that they're building systems and especially uh, closure. I would say uh, this is this is only a small sample of the way that racket has influenced. Uh, closure libraries, and I'll leave it to Rich to say how it may have influenced um, uh, closure language. But the other way is certainly uh, via employment. So, um, in on the Rust team, there there are numerous uh, people working on that team that um, were were educated, uh, influenced deeply by Racket and and especially its macro system and and Rust's macro system. Uh, to the extent that I can understand it, is 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 indeed influenced by uh, racket, uh, the pattern matching, the, the the hygiene. I mean, it's it's a, it's a stunning system, I would say. And and these guys, uh, among others, I would say, uh, have a lot to have, have a lot to say about that. Um, along this vein, there are other there are other ways that that racket. Are indeed influencing uh, industry, and uh, of course, uh, Sam sitting right over there has 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 helped out uh, with uh, Mozilla. has has gone to Mozilla and 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 had something to say about the way that their module systems are built. And and uh, Herman, of course, that name pops up here and there. You'll you'll see his name a lot if you if you follow this trail. Uh, and and Matthew, of course, uh, his his work on Honu was was instrumental in the way that Suite.js was built. And these are things that are actually, uh, you know, widespread and, and 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 garnering a lot of excitement in the industry. But the problem is, you know, this this is not enough. I mean, Racket influencing these languages is is is, is great. I think this is really very important, but. What we would like to see is people actually using Racket because there's a lot of programmers out there who are just hungry, hungry for something else, and it's not enough to eat a paycheck. I mean, it's they, they're really hungry for something more, and and I'm going to use a term that that uh, maybe some of you will not necessarily like, but I'm going to use it to sort of stand in for the idea of someone, someone out there who does not currently. Uh, is not aware of Racket through education, and is not using it. So this is this is the standard that I'm going to use. But they're hungry. Someone who's really hungry. And so, to do that, I'd like I'd like to uh, ask a question. Raise your hand if you've ever had an idea. See, a lot of people have had ideas. But keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. I want to ask if now put your hand down. Keep it up. If <laughs> Dr. Freeman, you can you can keep your hand down. I know you. I'm sure you've had ideas. <laughs> so there's a certain kind of idea that I want to ask okay. if you had. Okay. <laughs> so the kind of idea that that I'm I'm really getting at is the kind that uh, you, you something is really just nagging at you. And if you're like me, you, you, you may be working at your desk and you, you have your headphones in and there's kind of music playing, the kind of music that maybe we heard yesterday. So, you know, oops, 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 that, that kind of like driving beat, right? And, and so you're sitting here and, and, and all of a sudden something comes to you, right? And, and you stop, everything stops. And you look down and you're looking at no point in particular. You can put your hands down. Go ahead. <laughs> and and uh, you have no point in particular. I'll ask you to raise them again if you have that. Looking at no point in particular, but then the music is thrumming in your ears, and you see sort of this this like these colors come at the, the edge of your vision, and it's like red and, and yellow and, and blue, and it's sort of focusing in on them. If you can't stop it because you don't want to lose it, and you know that there's something there, and and sort of your your vision blurs a bit, and it becomes like this blackness in front of you, but not not like true black, but lacquer. You can see through it. And patterns emerge in this lacquer. And you know that you're on to a really good idea. And and it's coming. And you can see within these patterns that they're composed of smaller patterns. And 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 
you don't want to even breathe because you're going to lose it. And then all of a sudden, this, this, this flash and the doors of the mind are just blown apart. And now you just get it. You get it. And you realize that you're sitting there. And all that's left is an empty buffer. And you're ready. And you're ready to do whatever it was. So now raise your hand if you had that kind of idea. Okay. So good. Good. So that's the, the empty buffer. I mean, that's, that's the domain of the, the autodidact. Right. I mean, this is this is where this is where we live. Right. You know, we're we're, we're doing this over and over again. We're presented with this view all the time. And and I'd say that you know the 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 autodidact. You know, they they're constantly trying to learn, and and, and they're looking, they're hungry, and they're seeking, and they're really trying to make something better of themselves, and trying to expand their minds, and the kind of thing that they're looking for is exactly found in racket. And, and for someone like that to discover something new and come to uh, this idea and come to a language and sort of launch it for the first time and just type something really simple is really just a magical thing. You know, this should return three, and that's, that's awesome, right? And that's really a magical thing. And it's, although it's even more interesting if it doesn't return three. But in any case... <laughs> Uh, this is where this is where those guys live, and they're working, right? And they're working. They're going to work, and every day it's the same. It's the same thing. They're doing the same thing every day, and it doesn't seem like there's anything new happening. They're seeking, and they come to this new idea, and they come to these languages, and 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 and, and, and in closure, I saw this happen over and over again. There were many people like this just coming to the language because they were excited by the possibility, and they saw that there was this blank slate. And that, that they could contribute something. They could do something special within this language. And they were ready. And they wanted to ch change their, themselves and they wanted to change their industry by making themselves a different person. And so, you know, the, the patron saint of the autodidact is Aldous Huxley. And he had a lot to say about this kind of thinking. And I'll, I'll let you go out and seek that. But there's one thing in racket, there was one thing about racket, one small thing about racket that that sort of prohibits this, this kind of excited entry. And, and that small thing is that racket is just there. There's this mountain of stuff. And there's no, if there, from an outsider's perspective, it seems like there's just nothing that I could contribute to racket that it doesn't already have. So I think if you want to get into industry, and, and, and in my consulting work, I see time and time again these people who want something new and they say, oh, I've, I've discovered closure, and I want to bring it in, and, and I, we want to use it. And they've, they've pushed up to management, and they've talked to their peers, and they won't shut up about it. And, but, you know, that excitement spreads, and people want to uh, experience that kind of excitement. And, and this is really how many, many uh, projects I've seen have brought closure into the fold. And I think that if we want Racket to get in there, it's got, it has to elicit that same kind of excitement. And I think at, 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 as a language, it does. It totally does. But when confronted with this kind of thing, you know, a person might come to say, in, in the words of Hausman, as spoken by Captain Kirk, I, stranger and afraid, in a world I never made. Now, that's the worst Captain Kirk impression ever. But this is this is this is the idea, right? I mean we come to racket and it's like, whoa, okay, I wanna do a data log engine. Well it's already there. I wanna do some uh, you know some some lambda calculus. Well there's like seventeen there. And and so you know it, it, this is this is this is a real thing. I mean people are looking for a challenge and I think it it would behoove the racket community to sort of uh, provide guidance in that way and provide a way for people to really get in there and, and help. Uh, because there are people who are seeking that. And they'll come to you and they'll look for that in, in, in this language. But, the, and, but there's a bigger problem with that. And a lot of times they'll come to this language and, and although they're very excited, they'll come and this is what they'll look like. You know, they'll, <laughs> they have these ideas in their head and, and they come to rack and it's very different. And again, I've seen this many times in closure. And people... You know, they, they, they have these notions of how software is done and, and they're like grasping for those things, right? Like like a person who's drowning, they're they're 
they have this familiarity of being on dry land that they can just grab things and they can step on things. And, and that's what they try to do when they're sinking under the water. And this is, this, is, this is what people are doing when they come to a language like racket and a language like closure. They're flailing about. So, you know, those kinds of people, they need a helping hand. And so it's very important that when you have people like that, uh, to sort of guide them. I mean, I think Racket has a lot to say, and there's the people that I've met in the Racket community seem like these kind of people. You know, come here, let me show you something. And so, uh, you know, that's important because, you know, it's, it's not enough to just, if a person's flailing, it's not enough for you to say, well, there's some documentation over there. So, uh, let, me, let me illustrate this point. You know, who right now is, is thirsty? Raise your hand. I'm, I'm very thirsty, actually. So, okay, there. Feel better now? There. Okay, everyone feels good. I feel horrible, actually. So, <laughs> they, um, you know, this is the kind of response that you definitely don't want to give. These people are thirsty for knowledge, and they want to learn, and this is not good enough. And likewise, they're hungry, and feeding them a menu is not going to do it. You know, these are the kind of people that can work as a bridge between uh, where Racket's at, where they're working every day, and those people really need, uh, you know, a way to traverse those, you know, this kind of evil-looking thing down here. And that's sort of like industry, <laughs> industry, and their bosses, and like common programming practices, and this and that principle and manifesto, and and all of that kind of stuff, right? Because if they're not loaded up with the right kind of thinking, how are they ever going to be able to navigate this? You know, this is like marketing and language hype and, uh, you know, endless Twitter streams of people hating on this and that. And, you know, they, 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 they need a context for, for being able to filter that kind of stuff out. And if they're going to come to Racket, you, you have to facilitate that kind of thing. And, and, and maybe one day, one day you'll be walking in the woods, you know, after a long career of, of dealing with Racket or uh, working with racket and, and you've, you've made a nice life for yourself and you're walking through the woods and you, you know, maybe you'll stop and you'll say huh. it worked thank you <laughs> alright I, I, I can ask her questions if anyone has anything Yes. Um, someone brought you water. No, no, awesome. Thank you. I had water, but this is like more immediate. So nothing. We can talk after. Thank you. Oh, yes, Matthias. Why do you feel comfortable being I'm sorry. What do you feel comfortable being one Well, I don't. I don't. I don't have much to say about that. I, I can't help you. I think that uh, for you, you can't force people to come to this. Uh, it, it has to be, there has to be a willingness. And, and when you find the person who's willing to learn, then that's the person you have to, you have to, to, to get, that you have to help them. Yes? Um, just for fun, if you were to improvise the table of contents for maybe a follow-up book, The Joy of Closure, Joy of Racket, what, what would that look like? Wow. <laughs> Well, first of all, I would say written by Matthew Flat, and, and I think, and I think, and, and, and I, I watched him it, while I was giving this talk. He wrote four papers. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I I would I would definitely defer that, and and I would love to know because I want I would I'm not going to write that book, but I would read it for sure, and I think it would be an important book. Yes. So it's been a decade since I worked in a skip, and when you said the word skip, I went. So I'm, I'm astonished you got a jar uh, and you were doing closure. Were you able to do interactive things? Or was it all like locked down, and, like what you could do six months in advance? Yeah, so what, one thing that, we, that I was able to do is um, port our test suite onto closure. And so that was, you know, the library was there. They couldn't stop me from using it. They had, someone had signed it, right? If someone signs it, then it's, it's written in stone. So when that happened, I you know I ported the test suite over. We had these this horrible test suite of Perl scripts and like oh it's just a giant mess, and and you know that that 
showed some value, although I, 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 I will honestly say I don't think that it, when I left, that closure was continually used. But although I, I suspect that those test suites are still running. Yes, Will? So it's, it, for la you know, without going into too much detail, a SCIF is a, is a restricted environment on a government site usually. And so they have these machines that are locked down for lack of a better term. You go through these big gates and, they, and you close it right behind you. And so, you know, you, if, if you're not cleared, you even have, if you have to go to the bathroom, you have to like get someone to like walk with you to the bathroom. So it's like a miserable nightmare. It's like the worst environment anyone could ever work in. But there's a lot of people working in those environments, and they're not tweeting about it because they can't get to the outside world. <clears throat> yes. Okay. I think it's a secure, compartmentalized information facility. Okay. I didn't know that, but that it sounds acronymy. Yes, Matthew. So in your picture of Rakuten and Kabash painting, mm -hmm. it almost sounded like you were saying we need less libraries. Well, no, I, I mean that 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 ship has sailed. I think. <laughs> My impression has always been we need more libraries. Like people say, can I use Racket to do X, Y, and Z? And I say, well, you can do X, and there's kind of a prototype for Y, but no, we don't have a library for Z. And they say, oh. Yeah, yeah. So it, I, 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 I know you're right, but it, it, I really tried to convey a matter of perspective yeah. from an out, outsider's point of view. So how, do, how do we let people know that there's actually lots of? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're we're kind of struggling with that now in, in closure, and 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 if you come to a a solution, please let me know because I, I'd love to know. I saw a hand, yeah, Nico. Uh, so you, you talked a lot about so that having those folks to help bridge that gap and reach out and lend a hand to drowning swimmer. Are there practices that you've seen or found to be particularly effective at that? That the racket community is going to Well, I think that, you know, in, let's say, you know, I, I, I'll use closure as my touchstone, but, you know, there are people out there who are uh, putting together. Uh, you know, like something like Closure Bridge. Uh, you know, they're reaching out to people and trying to teach and creating websites like Foreclosure and and all kinds of stuff that that resources where people can go and without expending a lot of time and, and energy can can really like get a feel for what it's like to program in Closure. And one of the most Closure is the first language I've ever come to where it was you know there was really nothing there when I got there. There was an IRC channel, and Rich was there, and like ten other people, and everyone was. And Rich was like, "Well, what do I name this function?" And so, uh, you know, we had this big vote. That doesn't happen anymore, by the way, <laughs> for good reason because he'd be on there all the time, and people, you shouldn't have called it transducers and yada yada yada. <laughs> but in any case, you know, it was, a, it was an exciting time. But as it grew, you know, that that sort of core idea that people are there to ask questions, and I and I haven't gone on the racket IRC channel to. You know, validate that, that this is. I suspect that the environment is very similar. If someone goes on there, they're probably like, <laughs> "What are you doing that for? You shouldn't even want to do that." So, uh, but there's more. There's like this infrastructure out there of learning and teaching, and and I think that that would be. Uh, I think Racket could do it, and, and would be a great language for doing that. And uh, Doctor Racket is is like near perfect for that kind of thing. And now, how do we get that in front of people's eyes, and under their fingers? Yes. So one thing Steve Wolfram said in his presentation, he had a part of their website that had subject areas with full of examples of people that have done various things in Mathematica. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how effective that's been in popularizing Mathematica in their language, but you know, it's, it seems to me maybe Racket needs more of that. It already has some, but maybe per subject area, so people just browsing the internet could say, hey, you know, I'm really into tennis or physics or whatever, and they're <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I didn't know much about what he showed, uh, having no real, I've not, I've not used uh, Wolfram language uh, and and very minimal amount of Mathematica, but I, I mean, it looked pretty impressive. It looked cool, I and mean, I think it would be, it couldn't hurt. That's for sure. Yes. More like. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that, but that, that sounds very interesting. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I'm familiar with R, but not that specific approach. And then, you know, there's doc, uh, graphics, you know, it has this mm -hmm. gallery, and mm -hmm. if you're trying to make a diagram and you don't really know how to start, you look at the gallery, and have, I want something that's good like that, it gives you a starting point. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I, I see this gallery just filled with fish. <laughs> <laughs> I have this vision, so. Yes? Even our name is a little bit of a scheme of a graphic It's really a mafia. And it's very small. I think your message really is small. Well, it's, it's, you know, there's, there are these conflicting uh, viewpoints in, in industry. And, and so, you know, there's a lot of people that say they want that. They want that. They want to come to the language and everything's there that's ready it's waiting for them and then there are there are some and there are, these are the people that I was sort of talking about that are putting the putting the, the the word into the manager's ear that are getting that adoption you know getting the thing in the door you know they they want something else right they they they're looking for something else and so you know there's these conflicting things and I don't know that the right answer is you know make it smaller or make it make it larger I think that there's a balancing act there and and really like Allowing people to discover uh, what's there and and what's needed is probably more important than than, than the size. Do do I have time? Uh, we should, uh, yeah. Okay. That's it. Here's, please, big round of applause.